Hi there, Plastic Junkie here with f a, a new segment with uh, one of my first view. Actually, it is my first vehicle I've ever bought a vintage GI Joe. Okay, vintage GI Joe. I don't know why people say vintage. It's old GI Joe. No, it's 80s. vintage. Okay, eighties GI Joe. Okay, there's there's, there's other GI Joes from the sixties. That's what it, oh, over yeah, vintage. No, no. But now we're dealing with real American hero G.I. Okay, Joe. Okay, G.I. Joe, real American hero. And look who's here, Joe Nerd to help me. Hi, everybody. Don't Thanks forget. For watching. Go on his channel, Joe Nerd 11. Talks about G.I. Joe, naturally, and Transformers. So, enough of that. Here we go with CoverGirl. Like I said, it's my first uh, vehicle I ever bought. I got it at Toy Wars from Steve. So, if ever you want to know where he, who he is, or, or his call him, or contact me, or email him, we're going to put... Uh, his information right here. The Godfather, Mr. Godfather is going to do it for us. He's always the best. He's a technical person. Now he's does Mr. Godfather. Mr. Godfather. After a hundred and <laughs> something videos, he's he's the Godfather. The Mr. Peace. Okay. So, I think, you know what? I'm going to give, I'm going to give my review. Small, short one. Love. I always liked the art of the file cards. Uh, I love this. I don't have the box, but this is the file card. I like that her hair is flapping and she has nice red cherry lips. Beautiful makeup, you know. I don't know how voluptuous she is, but she's fucking hot anyways. I don't care. Uh, and uh, I love the way they, they talk about her name and everything. He's going to take care of that technical stuff. The figure itself, beautiful. Nice figure. He's going to take that care of that too because he's better with me with that. And... I, I like that you get you get exactly 12 of these little rockets and Mr. Joel Nerd what I give for me personally what I give this vehicle I give it a 5 it is one of my favorite vehicles because for me G.I. Joe this is real G.I. Joe <clears throat> I know it sounds weird but I prefer all the vehicles that are green it mm. opens up here to show nice. um, to show the other stuff inside and yep, close the, it. The engine and the inner workings. That's it. And then you could pop it back in. And now you know what? Take it away, Mr. Jonard. Okay. All right. So what else can I say about this? Um, you know, this is the first, believe it or not, as long a, a long time fan of G.I. Joe, this is the first time I've ever actually seen this Wolverine vehicle, this uh, Wolverine tank in person. Um, it's very old. I, I think I think it's I think it's from 1983, if I believe. Uh, I'm I'm just going by memory here. I could be wrong. Oh, well, I, we'll put the information as a yeah, subtitle just in I'm, case. I'm 99% that it's 1983. So then let's take the file card away for a little bit here. You know, uh, one of the things I really like about it when I saw it in person is I like how small and compact it is. It really looks like a really fast-moving, you know, hit-and-run type vehicle. Really, uh, really stout, but still really powerful looking. Um, I really like this. Ah, I remember the plastic junkie explained to me the only problem with this specimen is the rope is the, broken. Yeah, is the tow line here the is tow broken. Line, thank you. But that's okay. But um, but you know, I'm sure you're not alone. I'm sure a lot of people don't even have the tow line. Period. And the fact that you still have the little piece, even though it's broken, how many people wouldn't even have that piece? But I still, I like it, you know, like, it's something that I, like I said, <clears throat> if I have to collect G.I. Joe vehicles, <clears throat> I know this sounds weird, but I prefer to have them in the box. Yeah, I know. I don't mind paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars for them, because, I don't know, I'm plastic junkie, I guess. I'm just, I could pay something a dollar, I could pay something to three hundred dollars, I don't care. And people ask me, why would you open an old figure? Why? Because... If I pay cheap, why not buy open it? But if ever I do get a vehicle of Jeju, will I ever open it? Never. I would just prefer to have it in the box and and to never open it. Because to to have a, a, an original G.I. Joe box, vintage, it's like just so beautiful. I want to ask you something, Joe Nerd. Mm. What is this for? What, yeah. What's this here? I was looking at that. Um, it almost seems like it was... Uh, it could interact with something else in the with vintage other toy line. Yeah, that's it. But I don't know for a fact. Um, it does in the back. It does. You can see. You could actually well, look another vehicle yeah, in the course, back. Yeah, of course. Of course. This is uh, this is a usual thing. Another thing that they a lot of vehicles, vintage vehicles, had was a small circular thing with a hole in it, 
uh, just for gassing up with some of the other uh, larger play sets that had gas pumps. Well, let's look I, underneath I can't, it. I can't really see if there is that, but... It says 1983, so there we go. We were, uh, who was right? Um, I might have been right, but 1983. Like, like I Hasbro. told you before, though, you, you can't really take those dates as the gospel. It's, you know, it, it's give or take. It gives you a... Because some, like, these these toys take, a, like, at least a year to, you know, from concept to, to the finished product, so... This is, uh... They both move at the same time, which I really, really like. Because mm -hmm. I hate when some vehicles, you move one of the rocket, what do you call it, rocket launcher? Like a rocket pod. Yeah, rocket pod. Launcher. And one doesn't move at the same time. I hate yeah. that. It's bullshit. <laughs> this, I like that it rotates all around, <laughs> knocks on the head. Yeah, that's not so good. That's not so good, but you know, like, yeah, don't worry about it. Well, she's, she's supposed she's to be wearing a helmet. So yeah, well, it's a shame on her. Helmet. Hopefully she has a whole lot of hairspray. Oh, I'm, uh, no, look at the wind in her hair. No, I'm just... So, Joe Nerd is going to do a review on CoverGirl. Okay. By the way, she never comes with a weapon. No. She never no. did. That's, that's what I like about her. Yeah, it's uh, really, yeah, really easy to find a figure that's yeah. complete. It's perfect. <laughs> um, I don't know if you could tell, but uh, there's a little, um, there's like a little, um, like a little patch on her, on her uh, shoulder there, on her upper arm. And it's kind of like a like a wildcat symbol type thing, I believe. And she's the only one uh, team of her, her member that has that. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure she is. And uh, you know, another funny thing about her though is um, her head is a little bit on the big side. She has a lot of hair. Well, that and I think it's mostly because, especially in the early days, um, th you know, there there were a, there was. That was a pretty common problem. There, there were some figures that had a, a bigger head than they should, um, you know. But it's really nice to see this figure uh, in person again. I, this is the first time I see this figure in person. Did they use the upper torso body of uh, Baroness or of Scarlet, or it's totally new? Oh yeah, they're all unique. Okay. All of those, especially the yeah, the vintage run. Uh, Hasbro was not quite yet into the practice of reusing molds as much as they, you know, that started like in the in the early 90s. Then they started to reuse molds a lot. One of the other interesting things I find about her, despite her being really really old, is that she actually has foot holes for for pegs. Um, the the other vintage figure that's well it's nearly as old as her is um scarlet she actually yeah, yeah she actually doesn't have peg holes yeah i know it's, i find that weird i would like to have her mint on card yeah uh, um, and lady j too well you're i lost my my chance of getting lady j in toronto for 75 dollars oh yeah you told me about that mm. yeah I didn't have the money don't say boo i don't well, have the money <laughs> you can't you can't get everything no, okay. don't worry about it now i recall in the cartoon her first mm -hmm. appearance she was a blonde. Mm. Did they ever make a... Uh... Not until very recently. Mm. Um, not, in my knowledge, the only blonde cover girl. Oh, no, 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 I'm wrong. There are actually two cover girls that have the accurate blonde hair, I believe. Oh, you know what? No, I'm going to retake that back. There is another version of her with long reddish hair, brownish hair, but now just... Uh, upcoming there's going to be the G.I. Joe Collectors Club is going to have a figure subscription service and in that subscription service one of the figures is going to be an actual blonde haired cover girl I believe. Cover girl is just a I hope I'm getting that right. <coughs> Sorry to interrupt. Is cover girl just a code name they give all of them? Oh yeah cover girl is her code name. Yeah, they're, they're all the same. They're all named Clever Girl. No, there's oh, only no. one Clever Girl. Yeah, we're talking. Oh yeah, yeah. We're talking about she's the same character. I mean, and it's just different versions of her. Yeah, like what the Godfather was saying is that for some odd reason, back in the early '80s when the Sunbow animated uh, cartoon came out, for some reason the animators made her a blonde. Um, okay. Not really sure why. Maybe at the time Hasbro had in mind to make her a blonde. Yeah, and then on this second series that they made, then she was a redhead. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I really don't even know, actually, for a fact. Y you might know better than me. I just not, recall the cartoons. That's yeah, it. like, uh, I'm not really that familiar with the Sunbow cartoons as much as I should be. But anyway. Hmm. What do you give this? Hmm. Yeah, I gave it a five. I told you, right? Five yeah, out I love of five? It. 
Because it, why I like it, I, I told you, because it looks <coughs> very old. It has that vintage look to it. Classic green. I prefer having uh, this in green. Hey! Anyways. Uh, nothing else to say about this vehicle and figure. We're going to wrap it up. That was our little G.I. Joe segment with, uh, with Joe Nerd and Classic Junkie. I, I always appreciate him com having come to me for odd things like this because from, it's, not, it's not odd because see, I'm not much... I don't know much about the vehicle's parts and everything. He does. He loves that stuff. He studied it. That's what I like about him. So, high five for Joe Nerd. <laughs> Thank you very much. High five. High five for the Godfather. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yes. Okay, so... Yo, Joe, and... What else did they say? Stay plastic. Stay plastic. Stay plastic. Enjoy and smell. Peace. Later.